Hi everyone, my name is Norman, I run the blog NimbleNeedles.com and today I want to show you how to knit intarsia in the round. In my previous video I already showed you how to knit intarsia. The standard technique is perfect for flat projects, but when you knit in the round you're constantly facing one problem. When you start a new round, the bobbin for the color panel will hang down at the far end of the color block, but you actually need it at the start. So let's show you how to solve that problem. So the solution to the bobbin dilemma is actually quite easy. I'm going to try to demonstrate it to you. Instead of knitting in the round the regular way, meaning you're knitting in an upward spiral, you have to knit back and forth. That way the bobbin or the yarn will end up in the right place. Well, sounds too easy to be true? Well, I sort of have bad news for you. If you did it like that and you turned your work and now just simply knitted or purled in this case back, you wouldn't have another yarn to twist. So here you would create a big, big gap and we don't want that. So how do you avoid this? Well, you have to create a provisional join or twist. Let's show you how to do this in detail. You start a new color block by weaving in the ends as normal. I always start um, one stitch before the actual color plan panel. So this is how I personally weave in the ends. So this creates a very, very durable join. And, uh, but you can use whatever method you prefer. And then you knit the color block according to the chart. In this case, I'm going to knit four stitches. One, two, three, four stitches in the red color. And normally you would pick up another bobbin here and twist the yarns and continue knitting in teal. Well, we are not going to do this. Instead, you have to turn your work around like so. And now we are going to purl in this direction. But if I was just to purl like this, I would create a huge, huge gap here. Well, I don't want that. So what you have to do is you have to create a provisional join. So bring the teal colored yarn or whatever color your yarn has over the red yarn and twist it. And only then can you continue knitting or purling in the other direction. And what you did is you created a little well, float or loop here. And what you have to do is you have to pull that loop out quite a bit because we're going to use this loop to purl all the way back here. But first, obviously, you have to purl the color panel like normal. One, two, three, four. And when you're at the end, you have to find the beginning of the loop. You're not going to use the working yarn. You will only knit from the loop we just created. So pick it up. If it isn't big enough, just pull on it until it's big enough to knit with it. And then you bring the new color over the old color like you normally would. And then you purl all the way back, sorry, all the way back to the end of this color panel. So I'm almost at the join, but there's one thing you might have noticed. The red yarn actually got trapped here in between the loop. 
So before you can close the gap, you have to pull or push the red yarn or whatever color your yarn is through so it isn't trapped in between here anymore. And then you can purl the last two stitches. I mean, it doesn't really matter when you do it, but you have to do it. And when you're at the join, you can simply tuck on the tail or your working yarn. And now, as you can see, you will close the provisional join and create a permanent um, join without a gap. So, now obviously the red isn't in the right place anymore. So what you have to do again is you have to turn your work and in this case knit all the way back. But before you do so, you have to create another provisional joint. So you bring up the red, make sure it isn't tangled or anything. So you bring up the red, cross it, and only creating another loop here. You can already pull that out a bit. And only then can you continue knitting. Make sure to tighten everything up so you're not creating any gaps. And then you knit all the way back until you're at this position again, leaving the loop in the middle. I knit to the start of the red color lock again. And here things are fairly easy. Here you simply have to pick up the red loop. If it's too small, you can widen it and twist the yarns to create a nice joint. Then knit one stitch, then I um, tuck on the tails to close the gap. And then you can knit um, according to your chart. In this case, I'm knitting four stitches. And once again, the teal color got trapped in between the loops. So you have to pull it through. Uh, it got tangled like that. So um, there's no yarn in here. And then you can simply tuck on the tail to close the provisional joint, like so. And then you turn the work again. Again, we're, we have to create another provisional joint. So cross the teal across the red, like so. And then purl all the way back. And that's how you knit in Taja and around. So you're always knitting back and forth and creating provisional joints. And then you're knitting from the loops you created in that manner. So what happens if you want to knit diagonal panels? Well, you just knit one more or one less stitch of the respective color, just like a normal Natasha. So I'm on the return row or round here. So what I would have to do is I knit one more stitch in the teal color and they are both by decreasing the color panel so it would decrease towards a tipped end. Now the problem is if I wanted to decrease this color panel by one stitch per round then I have a problem now because I have four four red stitches one two three four across all those four stitches and now I would turn the work, I create my provisional join. But if I was to decrease this color panel by one more stitch, I would slip this stitch and then knit it. But the problem is it's just four stitches here and not five because I haven't knitted this return row yet. So this is a problem. You can solve this two ways. First, you don't decrease this way. You only decrease in every two rows. That's one way to uh, plot your color chart. And the other way is 
if I would have slipped this stitch, then I would have had three stitches here and then things uh, work out as well. So there's two ways to solve the problem, either slip stitches or uh, plan your decreases in a way that you don't have to slip stitches and just create um, decreases every two rows. Anyway, that's it. That's how you knit in Taja in the round. I really hope I was able to teach you this amazing technique. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Comment with your questions and your feedback. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel. Happy knitting.